Hey, our PC family, it's Pastor Kevin here. I'm excited to be with you this week for our online discipleship series as we celebrate week three of Advent. That's right, we have had hope, we have had peace, and tonight we focus on joy. And I'm excited that I get to share this with you for a few moments. Joy is our strength. Joy is what we need. And we are living in these crazy days. I don't know if you are experiencing what I'm experiencing. When we go to the stores, you can tell people are frustrated. They're tense. It's, it's tense times. And what we need is joy and, and that advent. And, and the definition of advent is the arrival. It's back in those times, they were waiting for the arrival of a Savior. And that came in the form of baby Jesus. And that's where they have found hope. That's where they have found their peace. That's where we find our joy. We love joy. Think about the movies that we watched this Christmas season. How many of those signature characters that they have, does it center around them getting their joy back? You know, like Ebenezer Scrooge. How about uh, uh, the Grinch when his heart starts beating again? Or Home Alone. I know it, it has nothing to do, but I just hear the word Kevin screaming out and you don't have to throw it out there. You probably know which one is my favorite movie. Anyway, I digress. Let's get back into joy. I want to share something with you. As you can see, if we read about the shepherds and the wise men, I'm going to go to Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 14. It says, that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel, angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven, peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. If you, as we read this, what we find out is the angels bring this word, this news of this Savior, this baby, and the news brought joy. And, and that joy turned into worship. Church, I want to encourage you throughout this season with everything that's going on, find your joy. It is your pathway to a great worship experience with the Lord. That, that's personally, that's corporately with your friends. It, it, it goes to finding your joy. Again, we can read and we can find out from the wise men. Uh, if you look at Matthew chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, it says, When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They were out looking for direction. They saw the star that was prophesied that they would see that would lead them to the Messiah. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Again, what they saw was that promise being fulfilled and that news, and they knew their Savior was here, and that brought them joy. And then once they got into the presence of that baby, they began to worship. Let me tell you, Satan wants to rob us of our joy to distract us from our worship. And I want to encourage you, no matter what you're going through in this season, and we've heard testimonies, we've seen things where it's, we are in trying times and it seems like there's a lot of turmoil and spiritually we could be in a desert. Now I want to read you one more passage and it's a little bit lengthy, but hang in with me because this word is going to help find a way back where we can embrace this joy because this is a promise of what God is going to do. Isaiah 35, this is verses 1 through 10. Actually, it's the whole chapter. So if you go to Isaiah 35, it says, Even the wilderness and the desert will be glad in those days. The wasteland will rejoice and blossom with spring crocuses. Yes, there will be an abundance of flowers and singing and joy. The deserts will become as green as the mountains of Lebanon and lovely as Mount Carmel or the plain of Sharon. There the Lord will display his glory, the splendor of our God. With this news, strengthen those who have tired hands and encourage those who have weak knees. Say to those with fearful hearts, 
Be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. He is coming to save you. And when he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind and unplug the ears of the deaf. The lame will leap like a deer, and those who cannot speak will sing for joy. Springs will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams will water the wasteland. The parched ground will become a pool, and springs of water will satisfy the thirsty land. Marsh grass and reeds and rushes will flourish where desert jackals once lived, and a great road will go through that once deserted land. It will be named the Highway of Holiness. Evil-minded people will never travel on it. It will be only for those who walk in God's ways. Fools will never walk there. Lions will not lurk along its course, nor any other ferocious beasts. There will be no dangers. Only the redeemed will walk on it. Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear and they will be filled with joy and gladness. I've preached this and shared this. Every time I see the word will in my book, I circle it because that means it is going to happen. I want to tell you, if this season goes on and you get your hope, you get your peace, you get your joy, I'm telling you, you will and have a worship experience with God Almighty like you've never seen before. If you are in a wasteland, if you are in a desert today, be encouraged and know that God is at work and he is making a pathway. If you were dried up, he is bringing a river to flow into your situation. If you were broken, he is ready to put it back together. God has promised that he will be with us and that our sorrow and that our mourning will disappear and we will be filled with joy and gladness. And again, as we heard the uh, Nehemiah in chapter eight, as he was speaking to the people of Israel, he said, don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Take just a moment and do a strength test for yourself. Where is your joy? Have you felt beat down? Let me tell you, all you have to do is ask God to come into your heart, come into your situation. Once you invite him and you begin to worship him, amazing things will happen. Start speaking the news of Jesus. Start telling this story. Your Savior came. Your Savior lived. Your Savior was born in a major. He grew up. He became our Messiah. He lived. He died. He came back for us. We have every reason to have joy. And we have every reason to be excited because that second advent, he will arrive for us. And we need to be strong and joyful because our God, the Father, is coming for us. And it is going to be a great celebration. In the middle of this Christmas celebration, I want to say thank you again for taking a few moments to be with me. God has big things in store. I, me and my family, are so glad that God brought us to RPC. Uh, and you can tell we got joy. Well, I mean, we've got a few stockings. So we've done our work, but we are happy. It's going to be loud this Christmas. Hopefully, all of you all will have a loud Christmas. I pray that upon you. Have a great season and be blessed. Wow.